From this setting, you've probably guessed that the theme is open water swimming. This isn't just any open water swimming video though. This is featuring an actual Olympic marathon swimmer who has just come back from racing at the games in Tokyo. My name is Alice Deering and I'm junior world champion in the 10K swim. This summer I competed for GB at the Tokyo Olympics in the 10K marathon. I'm also the first black woman to swim for GB at an Olympics, as well as a co-founder of the Black Swimming Association. Well, Alice, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's for been me. such a pleasure watching your sort of swimming journey and, <laughs> and also you getting to the games. I mean, that's amazing. Are you still on a high? Yeah, oh my God, it's, it's, it's crazy. I didn't really expect to ever qualify. So, oh, wow. you know, even just making it, you know, competing for Britain, getting, getting that opportunity is just incredible. And it's just made me want more. I'm not oh. gonna lie, yeah, I want that's more. That's awesome. <laughs> well, we're gonna wait. we want to pick your brain today. And a lot of our viewers, you know, triathletes who do a lot of their training in the swimming pool and then race open water, mm -hmm. And I know that's the same for you. Mm -hmm. what, um, are your what have you found is your biggest challenge of kind of converting your swimming from being good in the pool to actually being good open water? Um, yeah, so I guess I think quite conventionally for a pool swimmer going to open water, it's just getting over that fear thing of getting into open water. Um, you know, I try to make it look as easy as I can, but I'm not going to lie, sometimes inside I'm like screaming and just like, oh my God, this is so different. It's so alien. But I do really like the way it pushes me out of my comfort zone. And especially when I first started out when I was 16, it was getting used to that kind of shock and then just feeling comfortable with it and going with the flow as much as you can. Did you get any kind of, have you worked any coping techniques yourself or has someone coached you to sort of anything to help you mentally prepare for it? Yeah, so honestly, the first thing that I thought was if I saw everybody else getting in and I was like, if they can get in, I can get in. Nice. And that's kind of the logic that I used for it. I was like, as, as afraid as I am, and you know, there might be fish around and one of them might touch you or something, there's jellyfish. You know, just feeling confident in your ability, in your ability to swim and trusting in yourself that you are capable of doing it and as frightening as it may be, you'll only be in there for, well, I'm only ever in there for two hours max. And two hours of my life weighed against <laughs> everything, it's just worth it. <laughs> I so like the <laughs> games I, did, how, I know, how... it's like constantly gymnastics thinking about like, just trying to hype myself up for it, you know, and just find that confidence that I know is there. I just need to unlock it. And how did you become an open water swimmer then? I'm reversing slightly here, but um, I'm, I'm curious, is it something that isn't sort of natural to you, but how did you end up finding yourself at the Olympics doing <laughs> open water? <laughs> yeah, so when I was 16, well, so basically rewind a little bit. I've always been like a decent distance swimmer. So I initially started on 4am, then moved to 200 fly then did the four and the eight and the 15 freestyle in the pool. And eventually like, I got decent enough times at those and got given an opportunity to swim for Britain to qualify for European juniors. And me and my roommate actually promised that we'd just finish the race. And it got me through the whole thing. You finished yeah, it? Yeah, oh I was goodness. honestly so proud of us. I was probably one of my greatest achievements was just finishing that race. And it kicked off everything for me. Um, off the back of that, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. And they invited me to European juniors, which was in Turkey. I think the water was like 24 degrees, like bliss, and it was only 5K. And I went there and I ended up winning it. And then, yeah, off the back of that, I was like, if that's my second attempt at doing open water, it's kind of a no brainer to so just yeah. keep going with this. And then, yeah, just kept going. Had like a really good junior career. Now, like, trying my best to transition into like a really good senior career. <laughs> Now, kind of coming back to picking your brains a bit more, how you do most of your training in the pool, I know that, you know, you, especially living in the UK, it's hard to swim open water all year round. How has your training adapted from being, say, a four to 800 metre swimmer to now being a 10K marathon swimmer in the pool? Like, what's the biggest sort of changes? Yeah, so um, metres obviously go up quite a lot. Um, and honestly, I do like a lot steadier swimming, but then also contrasted with loads of sprints. Oh, right. So yeah, it was quite an interesting one. So it was a lot of like 25s, I'm not gonna lie, a lot really? of 25s back to back, just getting some good pacing, getting getting some good speed in, but then also these stupidly long swims, like five, eight hundreds or something like that, okay. just like, like as the main set and then a little bit afterwards as well, just like up and down at like a 115 pace long course, just like boring, I'm not gonna lie. People but... watching this are gonna be like, sorry, 1500 <laughs> just up and down. Yeah, right, that's amazingly fast. But um, yeah. that just puts into context how fast you are. Oh, um, and what sort of, when you're doing your big mileage, what's your weekly total? Um, yeah, so it gets like 60 to 70K, Ooh. which, 
Um, like, honestly, in open water, people be like, okay, that's like at the lower end. Like, really? I, I hear some of the women that I compete against, they do like 100k weeks. Oh and goodness. Yeah, honestly, I'm not going to lie, that's not for me. If I run 100k a uh, week, that's a oh lot. Oh my God. <laughs> it's one of those things where I need to weigh up my happiness yeah. against you know, training that hard. Yeah. And whilst you will get loads of benefit out of that, don't get me wrong, it's just yeah. one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it as well. So yeah. um, me and my coach have always have these discussions around what works for me. And um, yeah, I just encourage people to find whatever's good for them. Because, yeah. you know, some people are great at doing those meters and can happily do it. Uh, and, and some aren't. And I think you can get great results out of either way. So. Yeah, I think that's really great. And, and definitely something that triathletes, you're trying to fit three sports in, will take oh from God, that. Yeah, not not yeah. being pressured that they've got to do so much. Yeah. So much swimming. And what about your strength? Has that changed either sort of subconsciously or actually actively? Have you changed anything to sort of alter your technique to be better open water compared to pool or not really? A little bit, yeah. So in oh God, 20, in the start of 2016, I dislocated my knee and I couldn't kick for a while. So I just had to do loads of pull. And my pull ended up getting really good. And I kind of changed my stroke to have a higher stroke rate. Yeah. And it worked really well for open water because I used to be a very kick dominated swimmer, like six beat kick. And I can still access that now because it's so ingrained in me from when I was like a younger swimmer. Yeah. But now my stroke is just like, if I need to, I can switch off my legs and just go to my arms. And because I am so petite and I don't have the, the best power through there, it actually works really well for me to just be able to deal with stroke rate. And something that I think a lot of um, athletes who are kind of new to open water will struggle with is the pacing. Because obviously being in a pool, you've got the clock, even if you're yeah. doing 800s, you can still quite often glance at the clock or you've got other swimmers next yeah. to you. How do you work on making sure you've got your pacing right when it comes to open water? Honestly, I'd, that's, that's why I stick to the pool because I like to know where my times are at. And that's why I do pool training a lot more. And I struggle going into the open water in a training environment just because I don't know where I'm at. Like in my mind, I'm like, well, I sprinted that 25 or I sprinted roughly 50 meters. I don't know what time I went. And so it's a bit, it's so disorientating for me. So what I'd suggest is it's, it's not the most exciting way of training, but getting in the pool and just trying to hit those back-to-back -back times you want at a comfortable pace. So for me, that's um, what the race is held at. It's normally like a 112. So you get in, maybe do this. This is like a super extreme example, I suppose, you know, trying to be an Olympian or trying to be one of the best in the world. So you get in and do however many hundreds off 120, trying to hit 111s, 112s okay. and have it feel as easy as possible. So when you do get into a race, you can just access that easily. Yeah, and you know how yeah, it feels. Yeah, it just, time. like muscle memory, it just, yeah. it'll just kick in and you don't really have to think about it. It'll yeah. just kind of happen, which is kind of the nice thing, especially when you put drafting on top of that, then yeah. you just kind of glide along and it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, and that's another question actually. Do you, because we talk on the Triathlon Channel quite a lot about drafting and the benefit of that and mm -hmm. how you can practice it in the pool. Do you get to practice that in the pool with other swimmers or do you just purely kind of know the theory and rely on it when it comes to race day? Honestly, a little bit of both. It's a great it's a great way to learn what that feels like. And honestly, it makes your life so much easier. I'm very much a, a drafter in the race as much as I can be, especially with my size. I just kind of get dragged mm. along. And um, yeah, so in training now, that doesn't happen as much because of the way our lanes are and stuff. We don't have to swim around. And honestly, if I'm getting lapped, um, I'm not swimming very fast, so I shouldn't be getting lapped. Fair so enough. I try not to do that anymore. But in a race, it will just be, okay, let's get in, let's sit on people's feet, let's mm. move around the pack where we can and um, make sure when it gets to the final lap, you're in the right position and then just go through. And finally, sort of going back to your, your training, so back to the pool, mm -hmm. um, how do you split up the sort of ratio of the amount of really steady, like aerobic work mm -hmm. and then harder work and drills as well? Like what's your kind of breakdown of a week when it comes to your training in that sense? Ooh. So like steady recovery sessions, I probably only had about one a week, I'd okay. say. Um, the rest of them, I had three or four key sets a week. So sometimes that range from, you know, like a tough threshold set or a race pace set or like those short fast sessions I was mm -hmm. telling you about where, um, you know, we're doing 25s, but then the, the, meters of the, the meters of the session aren't that high. But then all the other sessions after that are kind of like long aerobic sessions, you know, swimming at um, like 50, 60 beats below. And just honestly getting used, your body used to be able to swimming that far because, um, 
you just need you just need to be able to cope with the volume at the end of the day it is it is as brutal yeah. as that sometimes and do yeah. you do much gym work to support it yeah a lot of um so i do two two gym sessions a week and then a core session on top of that and um my gym sessions were quite short but i just kind of roll through it so um kind of high reps low intensity where it's all based around shoulders basically a bit of bit of hips to um, core to make mm -hmm. sure like my body can stay stable but the load that went through my shoulders it was just constantly stuff like that and you know, stuff like yeah. that like my gym coach was basically like yeah we're just working on shoulders this season i was like yay great yeah <laughs> to add to the mileage <laughs> and what about how much did you do in the way of technique with with your training in the pool so i guess i'm really fortunate in the sense that when i was younger it got drilled into me to have good technique and then so when i've got older i haven't had to work on it too much which is um i'm really thankful to my mum for that i'm not gonna lie Aww. she we, we didn't know anything about swimming but she was just like we'll just get you good technique and then the rest will probably happen itself and uh, yeah she was right <laughs> finally actually this is just not, uh, so i've just sort of top of my head i'd love to know if you could share with us your your favorite and your most dreaded um key sessions oh my god okay oh okay my most hated session <laughs> Oh, I'll start with that. My most hated session, <laughs> 3100's best average. Nice. So yeah, and I think my favorite session would be 102's best average. And I know people are probably like, yeah. what is she talking about? Especially the contrast for the hundreds. But um, I just like it because it's short, it's quick, but it's also incredibly difficult. So um, I'd normally take them off 240 and look to hold hopefully 215, depending on my fitness. Um, maybe a little bit quicker. My average would probably end up being like a 13 on a good day and yeah. on a bad day, a 17. I hope, man. I mean, it's not going to make much <laughs> difference, but is this long or short? Uh, long. Oh my yeah. goodness, that's I'd rather take more. it long course, yeah. Um, 10 threes short course would be nice. And what are we going to see you targeting next year? What's, what's yeah, in the future for you? Yeah, so next year I'm going to have a change of pace. I'm looking to qualify for Commonwealth Games and because there's no open water, at the games. Um, I'm going to sh shift back to the pool swimming and do four and eight and hopefully qualify in those. I'm from Birmingham originally, so yeah, yeah, honestly. And the pool's like a mile away from my house that I grew up in, and it's in the area where I learned to swim. So it would just be so cool to be able to just go back and experience that. And um, yeah, I really want to be part of that um, England team that goes. So definitely got that. But then also got World Championships, open water and potentially Europeans as well. I'm not really sure what the calendar's looking like, but it's super busy next year. So it's a lot going on in 2022. 2023, it's already um, a qualifying opportunity for the Olympics, which it's just gonna cut, everything's coming so yeah. quickly now. And then obviously Paris 2024, and that's, it's basically, you know, I've, yeah. had my, I've had my good break, finished my Olympic cycle. And now, yeah, I'm looking back, looking to get back into it all and, you know, rock through hopefully to Paris. Amazing. <laughs> well, we're going to be watching you oh, like thanks. very eagerly and excited thank to see you. your progress. Thanks so much for your time, Alison. Yeah, yeah, all of your tips. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed speaking to Alice. Um, do hit that like button if you have. And remember, you can subscribe by clicking the globe and you can also follow us on social media.